We refuse to celebrate, July 4 protesters say not all Americans are free not all Americans are kicking back to watch fireworks to celebrate independence this holiday weekend. Amid thousands of protests against police brutality and a pandemic that has disproportionately ravaged communities of color, many people spent the 4th of July drawing attention to what they say is a hypocritical celebration of freedom. Protesters held rallies, marches and sit-ins Saturday in Chicago, Washington DC, Los Angeles and more than a dozen other US cities and towns. On Friday, protesters blocked a highway leading up to Mount Rushmore, where President Donald Trump was scheduled to speak. Police used pepper spray and arrested the protesters, who argue the land in which the monument lies on, Black Hills, was seized from the Lakota Sioux by the U.S. government in the 1800s, and that the Trump administration opposes the interests of Native Americans and other minority groups. On Saturday in the nation's capital, where Trump planned to host hundreds of people at the White House for music and fireworks, organizers led several demonstrations across the city amid the 90-degree heat. Dozens of veterans marched in support of Black Lives near the National Mall. Some organizers camped out in tents along Black Lives Matter Plaza. Kerrigan Williams, co-founder of Freedom Fighters DC helped lead a Deliberation march through the city's northwest neighborhoods. The Independence Day holiday doesn't really mean anything when black people weren't free on July 4 and those same liberties weren't afforded to us, said Williams, who has been co-organizing marches in the city for at least three weeks. We're still marching for the same things. Williams, who grew up in Houston, said she used to mark the 4th of July with family cookouts. But thoughts of her enslaved ancestors always lingered in the back of her mind. The family's real celebration, Williams said, was on Juneteenth, a holiday commemorating June 19, 1865, when Galveston, Texas, finally got the news that President Abraham Lincoln had freed enslaved people in rebel states two and a half years earlier. Amy Yeboa, a professor of Africana studies at Howard University, joined dozens of law students for an eight-hour sit-in outside the Supreme Court. We're honoring black women, the lives that have been lost to police brutality, but also the blind eye that America has to the injustices that face black women, Yaboa said, invoking the names of Breonna Taylor, Rekia Boyd and Ayanna Jones, who were fatally shot by police. This being the celebration of independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, I'll be talking about how these are not things black women have been given the space to celebrate, Yaboa said. Their justice is still being considered. American in 2020? Amid protests and a pandemic, what does that mean? In Chicago, hundreds gathered downtown Saturday afternoon for a rally and marched through the streets. Dozens more were marching in neighborhoods across the city. Rabbi Michael Ben Yosef, an activist and South Side resident who organized the downtown protest, said he grew up celebrating the 4th of July with family, watching fireworks and having barbecues. As he grew older, started his studies, experienced police brutality and lost a nephew to gun violence, that all began to change. Independence for people of color has not been part of our livelihood. We're constantly murdered, Paris because of police brutality all over the country. The concept of freedom does not seem to come to our doorstep, even though we've been here 400 years, Yosef said. We look at it as an abomination to recognize anything that comes with the 4th of July. Yosef said event goers planned to take a knee in silence for 8 minutes and 46 seconds in memory of George Floyd. A violinist was also expected to play the black national anthem, lift every voice and sing. Yosef had prepared a banner for the march bearing the face of abolitionist Frederick Douglass and his famous words, what to the slave is the 4th of July. The quote comes from a July 5, 1852, address that Douglas gave at an Independence Day celebration in Rochester, New York. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you, this day, rejoice, are not enjoyed in common, he said. This 4th July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. Frederick Douglass, he found hope in our Declaration of Independence. So can we. In Brooklyn, New York, activists held a confronting July 4 march and rally to honor black and indigenous activists, saying they refused to celebrate the whitewashing of this country. 
Joe Macellaro, who helped to organize the event, said Douglas' words still ring true, more than 160 years later. So much of it is still relevant, Macellaro said. What does the 4th of July mean to people who are still oppressed, marginalized, who don't have all the freedoms we're supposed to have in this country? In Los Angeles, dozens gathered for a farce of July march and caravan. In Seattle, organizers hosted a 4th the culture day of performances celebrating black lives. And in Pittsburgh, where pro-Trump groups held a boat parade to celebrate Independence Day, dozens of protesters, many dressed in black, gathered along the marina and nearby bridge, chanting, No KKK, No Fascist USA. Many more protests were planned in Atlanta, Boston, Cleveland, Honolulu, Detroit, Newark, New York City, Orlando, Houston, San Francisco and Philadelphia. But not all of the protests were taking place in the nation's largest cities. Roughly 100 people gathered at a park in Tallahassee, Florida, Saturday morning to march to the historic capital as a protest against police misconduct. The group shouted, enough is enough, and, say their names, too many, as well as several other chants as some held their fists in the air. Des Moines Black Lives Matter protesters congregated at the Iowa State Capitol for a demonstration led by black and indigenous activists calling for the removal of monuments to white supremacy in Iowa. In Stone Mountain Park, Georgia, home to a massive carving of General Robert E. Lee, Confederate President Jefferson Davis and General Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson on horseback, about 175 people, all wearing black, held a peaceful march, according to police. In Salem, Oregon, a portion of downtown was closed Saturday for a Black Lives Matter solidarity rally. The event, coordinated by Salem community organizers, was expected to draw up to 1,000 people, City of Salem officials said Thursday. In Brazil, Indiana, immigrant advocates gathered outside the Clay County Courthouse Saturday afternoon to urge authorities to suspend immigration enforcement and release federal detainees held at the jail there. The protest began around 10 a.m. in Indianapolis before a caravan made its way to Brazil. Artists nationwide were advocating a similar message over the weekend through a public art performance called In Plain Sight. The project used sky typing, writing in the sky using water vapor released from planes, to spell artists created messages at 80 immigration detention facilities, immigration courts, former internment camps and other landmarks. Many protest organizers said they planned to ask participants to social distance, wear masks and use hand sanitizer to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Some said that medical personnel would also be handing out face masks. Of course, you're always going to be scared, but it's for the movement for black liberation. You have to risk for that, said Williams, who said she is immunocompromised. The nation has a long history of Independence Day demonstrations. In 1854, abolitionists including William Lloyd Garrison, Sojourner Truth and Henry David Thoreau held a rally in Framingham, Massachusetts, where Garrison burned copies of the Fugitive Slave Law and the U.S. Constitution. From 1965 to 1968, gay rights activists picketed outside Independence Hall in Philadelphia. In 1976, prisoners at the Marion, Illinois, Federal Penitentiary staged a hunger strike against their inhumane treatment there. In 1986, after the Supreme Court upheld a Georgia statute that largely criminalized homosexual activity, activists protested in New York City. More recently, in 2013, following revelations about NSA mass surveillance programs, Restore the Fourth, a nonprofit supporting the Fourth Amendment, held rallies in dozens of cities. And in 2018, Patricia Ocomo climbed the Statue of Liberty to protest the detention of migrant children. Black Lives Matter, we must live up to Declaration of Independence's promise. Independence Day in the coronavirus era, we need more, we, and far less, I. Contributing, Alicia Devine, Tallahassee Democrat, Natalie Pate, Salem Statesman Journal, Robin Opsal, Maya Miller and Philip Jones, Des Moines Register, Indianapolis Star, Callie Huang, El Paso Times.